Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Marvel Plus, the podcast devoted solely to the Disney Plus Marvel series, and every once in a while we throw in some, some talk about the films as well. Today, um, my guest that I had stood me up. So we have a impromptu guest, Alejandro is here, to help me discuss and break down and rank all of the properties from 2022. So all the films, all the series, all the the shorts, the special presentations, and that's what we're going to do. We're just going to try to break it down, and we only got 50 minutes to do it. Usually, the podcast runs um, usually the podcast runs about an hour, hour and a half, so it's it's, it's going to be a difficult challenge to try to knock them out, but uh, we both have our lists prepared, yep. um, and this guy is awesome, man. He just volunteered last minute. Last minute, if you guys didn't see that, he just volunteered to be on. This is really cool, and he has a podcast of his own. And so he's used to doing this sort of thing. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the podcast that you do? Sure, sure. Uh, so the podcast I do with my friends Will and Maverick is called the Peter Porker Power Hour, named, of course, after the fantastical spider ham, mm -hmm. um, Peter Porker. And, of course, you know, it came kind of about after uh, Into the Spider-Verse, which I know a bunch of us are probably just waiting for that sequel to come out, what, Absolutely. next year, I think, right? Um, so thanks for having me. Honestly, it was completely random, but let's it do was, it. It was. I think it's the best way sometimes. And it, it just worked out perfectly man you're like you're so you were supposed to be here exactly you know um, and i'm actually really surprised like there's like actually some people in here and i was expecting to be talking to my phone by myself in here so um this is pretty cool um let me pull up my list here uh first of all though have you had a chance to see uh, the latest trailers that have come out so there's we got a secret invasion trailer yeah there's mm -hmm. a guardians of the galaxy volume three trailer that just came out yesterday right yes yeah. and what else do we have there's there's one other trailer uh, ant-man ant-man and lost quantum mania quantum mania so you've seen all those yes i have yeah let's get your thoughts on those and kind of like which one are you most looking forward to that's a tough one i want to say quantum mania because kang if uh there's folks who read the comics right kang has such a big storyline but such a big presence in i mean in a bunch of storylines honestly through the main at least the 616 universe mm -hmm. um i think it's supposed to be a game changer for where the mcu is going to go forward right in phase uh we just finished phase four but in phase five and six right we're supposed to get, uh, what's the next Avengers movie? Secret Wars? No. Uh, King Dynasty. King Dynasty, right. So yeah. obviously he's going to be the villain of that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious to find out once this movie comes out, Quantumania, is this King, the King that's the villain of this film, is that going to be the King in King Dynasty or is it a variant? You know? Right. They don't, how, we don't know yet. We don't know. How many variants are we going to see exactly. in the next couple of years? That's that's the question. Yeah. And like, I, and I, I even loved He Who Remains. Like, yes. And that wasn't even a scary variant, but he was really cool. Just he, his monologue was incredible. Like Jonathan Majors, like what a choice. Absolutely. He yeah. had this ethereal quality, right? Like he knew what you were going to say in a kind of creepy way. Yeah. And it's like, you, you can't yeah. win against him. You can't win against him in that, in that series, at least. I loved it. I love, I love, I love that they chose Jonathan Majors. Um, he's like, just, he's just really hot right now. He's, a, he's in everything right now. He's in the new Creed film coming up. Um, I love Lovecraft Country. Yes. Um, it's just, he's just, he's, he's amazing. He's sadly, amazing. Sadly unrenewed, but yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so very excited for, for quantum mania. Um, I, that's as much as I, I think movie wise, that's one I'm most looking forward to because mm -hmm. it's going to further the MCU. Um, we're going to get, you know, we're going to find out about Kang. Like you said, we're going to, um, we're going to move the story along a little more. And I feel like this phase four, at least hasn't done a lot of moving the story along. We've got a lot of stories, um, that, that are out there in separate and not a whole lot of moving this Kang story. Basically, only Loki really moved this story along. So, um, that's I'm looking forward to, for that. Well, I think I think all those little tie-ins are there, though, right? We just have to yeah. be be uh, patient. I think you know, think back to Phase One, right? Yes. Iron Man had a just what that Iron Man Two is the one that had the post credit scene, right? That connected to Thor in a way that kind of connected to Captain America. We didn't really know where it was gonna go. We mm -hmm hoped it was going to get to Avengers, right? Yep. And so I think that's kind of what they're doing with Phase 4. It's like you have this corner of the universe, something's going on in space, something's going on in the mystic realm, something's going on on Earth. And I think as King Dynasty comes closer and even Secret Wars, I think all of those storylines are slowly going to start to, to connect more. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's what I tell a lot of people too, because a lot of people have been a little disappointed with Phase 4, yeah. um, especially when you compare them to Phase 1 through 3. Uh, but like what how can you compare those how can you compare um 
the very introduction of a universe that we didn't even really know was going to be a universe like this to basically starting a new story. Right. And like, it's, it's such a different thing. Like now we've come to expect certain things from all the properties. Mm -hmm. And so if it's not perfect, you know, people are not happy. about. It. Uh, but I think I'm in the same boat as you. I'm always telling people like, calm down. Like this is just the, right. it, imagine it as phase one, part two, you know, it's like, this is the, the next set of three phases that we're going to get. And so imagine it like that. You know, we got a Captain America movie. It only really connected through the post credit scene. Right. And that's, that's how they were for a while. So, um, but I do think Quantumania is the one that's going to push this story forward the most. Um, but other than that, I'm really looking forward to Secret Invasion. Yes. yes. I, I'm, I'm such a fan of the grounded um, superhero stories, the more realistic kind of street level stories. Um, I, I love Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, Hawkeye was one of my favorite series. Yeah. I love the stuff that feels like it could actually maybe take place in our world, but just <laughs> a little bit fantastic. You know, that's the kind of stuff I like because uh, I don't know. It, you can you can pretend it's real a little more. You know, right, it looks like right. it could be happening now. Um, like super soldiers, that's a believable thing. Mm -hmm, we can juice mm -hmm. people up right now. We can do that. We can make super soldiers. You know, put the right chemicals in people. So. Um, well, it's this interesting thing too, right? Because I think when we saw that trailer, you started to see, and if people know the comic storyline, right? The the Kree, it's no the scrolls. Mm -hmm. They're invading, right? They're taking over people. They're pretending to be them. Yeah. So now you start to think, throughout the MCU, have they been there the whole time, and yes. who have they been? You know, uh, the character of yeah, what's her name? Agent Thirteen from uh, Falcon and Winter and Winter Soldier. What's her name? Um, Sharon. Sharon Carter. Thank Sharon you. Carter, thank yeah. you. When that show came out, people were like, "This isn't in character for her. This mm -hmm. doesn't make sense for yeah. her." To I don't know if this is a spoiler. I feel like at this point, we most people have seen it, right? Yeah. To be on this island, to kind of be lord of the criminal underworld, right? So does, does this show open the doors? Maybe she's a scroll. She's a scroll that's taken over for yeah. her, right? And yeah. I know that's kind of what I hope because yeah. I'm like that would explain your motivations a bit more. But mm -hmm. also, we haven't seen her enough to know if what her storyline is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. I think that about a lot of people that we've seen, um, the DODC, they mm -hmm. seem really incompetent. <laughs> they, they seem like every time they capture someone, they escape from max security prisons. Like right. they, uh, they just, I don't know. They, they seem kind of like a joke. So I'm hoping that maybe they're just scrolls that don't know what they're doing. And that's right, why, right. you know, they, they can't do their job very well. Um, but I guess we better probably Let's jump to into, it. uh, our rankings here. So, we're ranking everything from the year 2022. So everything from Moon Knight, I believe, was the first release, uh, yeah. all the way to the Guardians holiday special. Yes. And let me have a surprising list for people. Uh-oh. <laughs> I, I usually do. I usually do. It's wild to think that we're ending 2022 and we've had eight Marvel properties drop already. Like, five years yeah. ago, we had one or two, three at best right yes uh, and i think sometimes it does kind of play into this marvel fatigue in a way you mm -hmm. know when you got movie show movie show movie show yeah there's you know, always something on there's, there's always something there's on. always a marvel property and if you don't it's not that it's star wars so like disney is <laughs> there's non-stop something out yeah now don't assume we haven't watched andor yet but i get that. i will see <laughs> that is it's for me it's some of the best star wars that's ever been made really ever been made. yeah fantastic storytelling really gritty, really dark ground level stuff. It's like, it's like, what's the rebellion to the common man? Like, what does it look like from the street? Mm -hmm. You know, not to the Jedi, not to the Sith, like uh, not to the empire. What's it look like when regular people like see stuff happening? I love it. Absolutely. So let me pull up my list. If you want to actually, we can mine. start with your number eight oh, and okay. get right into the list and count it down to your absolute favorite. Okay. So I made this list approximately five to six minutes ago. Yes. Thank um, you so for that. So kind of just threw it together. Um, but when I was making this list, I qu thought quickly, now, how does this impact the overall MCU, right, going forward? Yes. How does it maybe add to the lore from the past? But also, how is just the quality of the writing, the quality of the acting, um, some of the CGI? Um, so my number eight, as much as I love the two main characters of this, is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, uh. <laughs> 
Now, I love Doctor Strange. I love Scarlet Witch. I'm a Scarlet Witch stan to the end of my days. But it was a rough scene. It was a rough movie. Yeah. Coming from WandaVision, you know, where Wanda's embracing her grief a little bit more. You know, we see that scene at the end where she's like, no, I'm going to let these people go. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go and live in a forest alone to the opening scene of uh, Doctor Strange 2 where, if I remember correctly, she's fighting them, right? Is that the opening scene? No. To Doctor Strange 2. Um, you, know, you have America Chavez in the dream sequence. Right. With Doctor and Strange. then they start to basically influence her. Yeah. Then when they go to to see her, um, she had, she's like the fake. She's faking she's it faking out. She's faking it out. Yeah, right? yeah. That, didn't, that transition didn't work for me. How did we get no. to her starting to accept her grief mm-hmm. to, I'm a bit of a rampaging monster. I still want my kids again. And yeah. don't get me wrong. Grief looks different for everyone, right? I'm a therapist. Like, mm-hmm. I get it. Um. But that transition there, I was like, something's missing in the story that I think even an extra scene at the beginning is how she started to be influenced by the dark hold, I think would have added much more. Because we only get that that post credit scene at the last episode of WandaVision that now she's starting to read it. Mm-hmm. Great. But now she's literally killing everyone yeah. of the mystic arts so she can get her kids back. Yeah, and how much it, time has passed between Exactly. It didn't track for me. It didn't track for me. And okay. some of the CGI, you know. Okay. We are I Right away, we're gonna have very, <laughs> very different. <list. laughs> good, good. Um, but that makes it more interesting. So, uh, my number eight is Thor: Love and Thunder. Did not enjoy Thor: Love and Thunder very much mm-hmm. at all. Um, I love Natalie Portman, yeah. but I don't love her as Jane Foster. Really? Why no, is that? No, I really don't. Um, she's great in other things. Yeah, <laughs> she's not great in that. I don't. I don't like her that much in that in that role. Um, my biggest problem with that movie was the the massive difference in tone throughout the film. Mm-hmm. You have a woman who is dying from cancer. Yeah, is one of the things, one of the stories you're following. Another is Thor on his epic adventures through space. It's all funny. It's hilarious. These screaming goats, right? Yes. And then you have Gore the God Butcher who lost his entire family to the hands of the gods. Right. And he's seeking revenge. And he was the best part of the, about Thor Love and Thunder. I think Christian Bale was the best thing about Thor Love and Thunder. Um, and it's, it's only saving grace. The only thing that I'll rewatch it for is for the gore scenes. I absolutely love that beginning sequence. Yeah. Um, as heart wrenching as it was. But I thought it was all over the place with the happy, silly, over the top joke dropping. Mm hmm juxtaposed with you know um jane dying yeah and gore's family being gone didn't did not work for me so i disagree but i'll get to that later <laughs> that's all right that's all right i agree with some of your points though but all right number seven sir my number seven and this might be a hard one was uh miss marvel okay i love kamala khan i love her comics i read her first comic at my local Walgreens when it came out because uh, I did not have the money to buy it at the time. But what it tried to do in six episodes was too much. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. the episodes three and four, when she goes to India, she kind of has this flashback sequence. I feel like they needed more episodes for that. It wasn't earned yet. I felt like her storyline overall of her coming into terms with being weird, being different. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love that. I feel people relate to that. Kids who watch the show are going to relate to that. Um, Pakistani people who watch the show are going to relate to that. But that, the the India parts didn't feel earned. That to me was a season two, or it was a three more episodes added on, make it a nine episode series. Okay. You know, I think there was also and a lot of critique on Twitter too about how her powers, you know, aren't necessarily straight from the comics. And now, now I don't think they have to be. Um, I think right. we're going to see in the Marvels slash Captain Marvel 2 why the powers are a bit different, how it's all going to connect. Um, but I think overall, I will say the acting wise was fantastic. Her interactions yeah. with uh, Bruno, her mom, her brother, her entire family was, as, as a POC myself, I'm like, I, I can relate to this family. Um, I thought the acting was superb, but it was just those two episodes in India. I was like, these don't feel earned yet. Yeah. Um, I will say that drop at the end of you're the a mutant essentially, yeah. and then the little key change to play the X Men theme. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, this is gonna go somewhere. I think it was so funny though because so so many people 
slept on that series um, purposely. Yeah. They're like, oh, I don't really relate with a teenage Pakistani girl. Right. I'm not going to watch a show, you know, middle aged white guy. He's not going to watch that. Sure, sure. You know, but I mean, I watch it because I do the podcast. Like, <laughs> other, Otherwise, I, I don't know if I would have watched it, but I'm really glad that I did. Um, that's my number seven as well. Mm-hmm. And I hate to do that because I remember while I was watching it and reviewing it, um, I was talking about how much I loved it. Yeah. I loved all of the character stuff in that series. I loved all the family stuff. Mm-hmm. I love all the interactions um, between the characters. The only thing I didn't love is the freaking superhero story that they told. Yeah. Like I didn't care. I thought the villains were really lame. They got defeated way too easily. Um, and that was the thing too. Their motivations were unclear to me. Yeah. I still didn't what really they get want? it. They, they want to bring a, a different world here and right. make it all one. And I, I, it was a little much uh, to try to comprehend. Like you said, in six episodes, we need, maybe needed more time. Yeah. Especially if you're introducing a brand new character. You know, She-Hulk gets nine episodes. Right. Shorter episodes, gets, but nine episodes. Right. Yeah. Ms. Marvel gets six. And you're right. It, they used an entire episode for the flashback. So we got taken out of the main story for a while. So that's one thing. The main story suffered. And then also, yeah, maybe that belongs somewhere else. Yeah. Maybe either um, in a later episode, if you add someone, like you said, or a second season. So um, I think I the only reason I put it there is because I didn't like the superhero story. And these are superhero shows. Yeah. You know, How, I can't rank it at the top if it's not telling a good superhero story. Uh, but the the introduction of Kamala Khan, I absolutely love. I, I love that character. Cannot wait to see her in Marvel. Yes. And I, I wasn't even looking forward to Marvels that much mm-hmm. until I saw this show. And now I'm like, I really want to see. It. Well, and, and I think too, the, the fact that she's such a fangirl, that's, like, that's that my end. literally be me, right? Give that, me some superpowers. That was my end. When I started it, I said, I remember I, I did like a, I did a reaction uh, to the trailer mm-hmm. and I said, I don't know if I'm going to get much from this. You know, I, how do I relate in any way with this character? Um, she's a teenager uh, in, in 2022. I, you know, I was a teenager in like 2001. <laughs> like I, I don't, it's a different world. Yeah. And so I didn't, I didn't know how I was going to connect with that character in any way. But then when I, that very first episode, when all she wants to do is go to Avenger con, I was like, there's my end. Where are we right now? She, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, there's my end. She's a, a, a fangirl. Yep. As am I. Yes. So, um, all right, moving on then. What is your number six? My number six, uh, similar to your number eight, is Thor. Okay. Um, I felt like having read the comics of Jane Foster becoming Thor, Lady Thor, whatever mm-hmm. you want to call her, uh, her cancer storyline, I thought it was an interesting reflection, right? An interesting parallel. So you got Thor having fun, exploring the world, hanging out with the Guardians. Meanwhile, the, the other Thor is literally dying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I felt like those tones, they didn't just they didn't mix well. Um, I could see them trying, but I felt like, I don't know if it was Taika Waititi's um, direction or the writing, it just they didn't blend well, I think, as well as they wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I had seen on Reddit, though, was, you know, this is uh, Korg telling the story, right? Yes. So I'm like, all right, I can give some credence there. Uh, you know, Korg. A small is, bit, yeah. Yes, a little bit. Korg is going to make things funner for, for the kids. He's going to not talk about death too much. Besides right. Gore He's killing a bunch a, of guys. Kind of a silly story, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I will say my, my favorite part of that was seeing Hercules at the end. Really? Yeah. I disagree. I feel like, I feel like it opens a door, <laughs> and I like open doors. Yeah. I, um, I do like it. It was one of those post credits that actually um, makes you think. It's like, what are we getting next? Right. And I miss that. We used to get those all the time. Like, now I want a Thor versus Hercules, right? Right. Now, do I think Brett Goldstein's the best? Hercules? Eh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I actually don't watch Ted Lasso, so if any of you watch Ted Lasso, you can tell me a bit more about Brett Goldstein. Mm. Um, but I think it opens the door. Like, is Thor 5 now going to be Thor versus Hercules or the Greek gods? Right? Are they introducing right. that whole enclave into the, the main MCU? And how's that going to affect? I didn't like Kang? Zeus. Did you like Did you like Russell Crowe as Zeus? I think I, w- I think I was supposed to like him, and I didn't. Like, I went into that movie like, oh, Russell Crowe's in this. I think he was a bit too stereotypical Zeus. Uh-huh. But again, if, if Korg's the one telling the story, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. But I wish, if that was going to be the main... Um, I want to know. I want to know if that was the intent. The, the right. Korg narration. Because they I keep hearing more. people giving it that excuse, and I'm like, yeah. 
well, I, I wish, you know, uh, Taika Waititi could tell me, like, yeah. yeah, that's exactly what we were doing. And then I can maybe forgive it a right. little bit. Add but, a, another scene or two that kind of adds that, like maybe a kid gets scared, right? He finishes up at the end of the story and yep. and, it, and it's, uh, yeah, or, or somewhere in the middle. You, you... Favorite character though, Valkyrie Tessa Thompson, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Queen She's my favorite from, from uh, you know, uh, since they introduced her. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I love her. I love her. I love her in Creed. Yes. So good in Creed. Um, All these Marvel stars also being in the Creed universe. <laughs> I know. What is that? Good acting. Good acting. I, I, I saw I saw a cool little meme of uh, Jonathan Majors um, and Michael B. Jordan in a yep. ring on opposite ends, but they were dressed as Killmonger and Oh, and Kang. okay. I yeah, love that. It's pretty cool. Um, they just mixed the two uh, the two, two franchises. Universes, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So where are we at? Number six for me. Yep. Um, my number six. Uh, as much as I enjoyed it, I feel like it was just uh, it was a bit of fun. It didn't push the story forward a whole lot, but it was She Hulk. She-Hulk Attorney at Law. Um, I think I liked it a lot more than a lot of the internet did. And But what I loved about it is the fact that it called out the internet constantly. That was the best part of it. Like, the fact that it did that, the fact that she broke all the walls in the final Literally. episode. <laughs> um, I loved the Kevin Feige robot AI that's creating all of the MCU. Um, but I just think there were stronger shows. There were stronger yeah. shows that we got. Um, but I definitely enjoyed it. I, I I think that people who didn't enjoy it, um, for one, I think they were going in planning not to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, but number two, I think it has a lot to do with like accepting it for what it is. If if you go into that show thinking this is a She-Hulk comic, she's going to break the fourth wall. She's right. going to make a lot of jokes. There's going to be a lot of, um, you know, narration to the to the audience, and it's a silly fun time. Yeah. There's like an action adventure in the background. But it's a silly fun time. And it's kind of an anthology. Like each episode covers different cases, mm-hmm. case of the week type thing. I really enjoyed that. I liked that. Um, I just, you know, so that's why it beat out the others that that I've listed so far, but didn't quite make it to the top. I thought it was good, but there's just better stuff that happens here. Well, and that's why it's actually my number five. Okay. She Hulk. All right. Um, this works perfect. For a lot of the same reasons. All right. Um, I thought Tatiana Maslani was perfect as She Hulk. You know, there's the the critique about some of the cgi Mm -hmm. and i'm like that i get you know but i also think like what realistically would she hulk even look like i don't think we'll ever know yeah um shout out to the cosplayers though who do an amazing she hulk yeah um we should have got one of them right (laughs) for all the action sequences yeah uh but i think the acting was great the storylines are great i mean it's a 20 30 minute law comedy you know that's Mm -hmm. what it's supposed to be and that's what it was and ally mcbeal with superpowers yeah absolutely you know and i think because it was such a different tone from the rest of the MCU, I think that's why I got a lot of the uh, negative feedback. Sure. But I don't think it's because it's supposed to be anything else. It's supposed to be a straight comedy. I was happy that it was different. Yes. That's and my favorite shows... thing about the series, is that yeah. each series is a little bit different, gives us a different thing than, you know, the, the big complaint about the MCU is that, oh, it's all formulaic. You know right. exactly what's going to happen every movie. They, you know, act one, act two, act three, you can kind of tell what the story's going to be. Um, but I'm glad in 2021, that's one thing I can give it. I don't think it's the strongest phase we've had, uh, but I do think that they have taken more risks and, yeah. and, and tried a lot of new things. Absolutely. And I think yeah. it's going to, I think that's going to be a good thing moving forward, right? They are trying all these different themes, all these different tones, because let's see what works. Why not? They got the money. Mm-hmm. We want the characters. Why not try it out? You know, especially yeah. with some of the others on the, the, that we haven't named yet. Yeah. Why not try it out? Throw some money at it. Um, and I think in a way it did lay some foundation for the future too, right? We got, um, Hulk's son yep. who also got a lot of negative feedback. Yes. Um, but at the same time, it's not Hulk show. It's she Hulk show. So the Absolutely. focus is on she Hulk and hopefully her love interest with daredevil in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Best episode. I think that daredevil episode. So the chemistry yeah. between her and Charlie Cox was so good. Yeah. And, um, and, and just how they homage the hallway fight scene for a second <laughs> and then, <laughs> Daredevil is still like my all-time favorite. It might be the best thing that Marvel has ever made for me. Yes. I love the Daredevil. Like every season of it is so good. I think they just started filming for like Disney Plus's Daredevil. I can't wait. Right? Can't I can't wait. wait. Yeah. I I worry about that series because I don't think they can capture that same quite as dark tone. Um, and I worry about rehashing maybe some of the same storylines. Sure. They did name it Born Again, and season three was basically Born Again. So, mm-hmm. um. We'll see what happens. But we'll I liked I when I saw him in She-Hulk, I was not disappointed. No, and no. that's that's what I was worried about. Like, are we? Is he going to be so toned down that 
you know, it, it's Charlie Cox. It's Charlie Cox. And he was born to play Daredevil. Yes. And yeah. so it comes through. It's like, oh, that's that's Daredevil. The yeah. same Daredevil for me. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. Me too. Me too. Really. Uh, where are we at? Number You're five. Number five. Yeah. My number five. As you see, my laptop is empty here. <laughs> I couldn't connect it to the Wi-Fi. Oh, no. So I don't have my list. But I remember my list pretty well. Um, so number five for me was Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I actually I went back and forth ranking this even higher than this. Mm-hmm. It was never any lower than five. Um, and that was a big surprise for me. I wasn't expecting to love this holiday special so much. Uh, and I watch it. I'm like, wow, it, not only does this feel like watching the Guardians, we're back in that same world, uh, but it was genuinely funny. I was actually laughing out loud watching yeah. it. Um, not like where She-Hulk, you kind of smirk a little. You smile at things. It's kind of, oh, that's cute. That's funny. Um, or you think something's clever, like the end of She-Hulk. Mm-hmm. But with this Guardians of the Galaxy special, I was every time Drax laughed inappropriately, I did too. Every single time. So I I thought it was perfect the way they paired up the people that they paired up. Uh, I think uh, Drax and I think Drax and Mantis are the perfect pair, comedy pair. Um, And then just bringing Kevin Bacon in was genius. (laughs) How do you not do that? That's so, so great. And I I saw some interviews with Kevin Bacon, too. It seemed like he really enjoyed doing that. Good. And and a little interesting. factoid i guess is kevin bacon said that uh when he saw guardians of the galaxy he had no idea that he had a name drop in it and so really? yeah so he was there with his family watching it in the theater and they dropped like oh kevin bacon and like Hero this whole thing universe, yeah yeah and so he, he you know he got a big kick i out love of it. So that he I was happy that. to do it um but yeah guardians of the galaxy my number five like i said I, I went back and forth it was everything from five to four to three yeah um but i, I thought it was fantastic well and that's actually my number four heartfelt too really yes heartfelt. And that, that part of the reason why it's my number four is I think everything you said, right? But I also, you know, in the main films, we don't get a lot of Drax. We don't get a lot of Mantis. You know, mm. they, they have their B storylines or C storylines, if anything. Um, one-liners, right? One-liners here yep. and there. Mm. Um, Drax jumping out of nowhere with knives ready to fight. Mantis, finding it, you find out she can punch and yeah. fight too. And so I like that it the side story focused on them. You know, I like that it highlighted a bit more of the personalities. Mantis is a bit touchy feely, but also gets in a rage really quick when Drax yes. makes her mad. Yes. Um, they both love weird inanimate objects. Yeah. Um, and it's like we we wouldn't really have known that about these characters. You I know? think it's a, I think that was the funniest line for me is when he thought that that the candy cane was a man. Yeah. <laughs> a little man. I thought that was so funny. Um, and then how how Mantis asked the police officers, "Does this look like a man? Does this look like a man to you?" Oh um, but the uh, let's say uh, the the only thing that I can say negative about that was the CGI. Like yeah. when they did, um, there's like a sequence where they're jumping over fences, and it's like that looks really bad. That looks really bad, uh, cartoony. Also, I um, don't know that Drax would have jumped over. I feel like he would have just punched run through. his way through, run yeah. his run through the walls, the yeah. fences. Yeah, likely. But I mean, it definitely did. You know, some things for the comedy, and I think that's normal. That's expected. Mm. Um, loved that uh, Rocket got Bucky's arm at the end. I want to yes. know what that's about. Yes. Does Bucky not have an arm anymore? Did... I know. That's the question I keep getting. Yeah. Wait, how, wait a minute. Is Did it... Nebula beat Bucky in a fight? Yeah, what's if going so, on? I want to see that fight. Another question is, um, what's going on with Gamora? Oh, what's going on? Did she Did she stay with them in Endgame? Or, like, because I know that in the Guardians 3 trailer, she's with them, but she's not in this holiday special at all, so... Where's Gamora? Right. What's going on? I mean, that's one of the big questions, right? She wasn't in the special. Right. As far as I remember, at least at the end of Endgame, she kind of went on her own path. And uh, the Guardians, mm-hmm. at least Peter, was going to try out to go see her, right? But then if you follow the Guardians, right, we see them again in Thor uh, 4, whatever it's called. I can't even remember at this point. Um, Love and Thunder. Yeah. Love and Thunder. Love and Thunder. She's not with them, at least in that right. quick scene we have, right? So they've, I assume somewhere between this holiday special and Guardians 3, they're going to be out there looking for her. And she's going to, if not join them, at least team up with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess it'll just be something we got to track. Uh, and, and this is the same Gamora, right? That's 
time traveled, so to say. So she's missing this yeah. whole. She's not our Gamora, so to say our Gamora is, is dead. Is dead, right? So I'm gonna right. be interested to see how that interacts. Like Peter's yeah. in love with Gamora. This Gamora has no idea who this guy is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember she socked him like for <laughs> for coming right. on to her. So yeah, it, that that's the thing, and it kind of takes away a whole element too of like that relationship had built over the course of the the films, and they had actually professed their love for one another and and been basically together by the time she died and that was a big part of his arc is losing her and so yeah. it'll be really interesting to see like how he interacts with this new version and do that trailer by the way I, we didn't mention it earlier but that trailer um at first it's all like fun crazy action packed but then it's like there's some gotta be some heart-wrenching stuff in there because like you see peter quill like crying his eyes out like what is gonna happen I think, in this uh... movie yeah, and then you see what what looks to be like a younger Rocket when he was maybe a baby. You see uh, Lila, who's at least in the comics like his wife, his animal wife. Like mm-hmm. we're gonna see where this goes. We're gonna see where it goes. I will yeah. say, I think the special, and we'll get into the special in a bit, right? I think it does set up, you know, s- some good context for where this next movie's gonna go. Yeah, absolutely. I that's like we we talked in the beginning about like. I'm mostly looking forward probably to um, Ant-Man, Quadrumania, but that's because yeah. it's coming first and it seems to push the universe forward. Yeah. Um, but I, just thinking about it now is like that that trailer looks like devastating. Like who knows what's going to happen in there? Who knows? Who knows? Um, so where are we at? We're at my number four then, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. My number four and I don't know if people are going to agree with me on this one or not, but number four is Moon Knight. Okay. Really, okay. Interesting. I, re- I really enjoyed Moon Knight. And like I said, the, the Guardian special could have been four um, or three, but mm-hmm. it ended up, it ended up. Um, I, I don't think it's really any worse or better than Moon Knight. It's just how the list ended up. So, uh, but mm-hmm. I love oscar isaac right like how oh Absolutely. my god give him an oscar give oscar an oscar give him an emmy give, whatever the tv one is <laughs> yes just give him the oscar just for his namesake just do that it doesn't matter <laughs> if it's the tv award um but him uh ethan hawk who i keep yes. wanting to call kevin bacon do you ever mix those two up e- ethan hawk and kevin bacon no no what <laughs> i don't so know different for me. <laughs> I've always mixed them up. I don't. I have no idea why. Um, like, wait a minute, was Ethan Hawke in Tremors? Who who was in Tremors? Oh my uh, God. But, <laughs> yeah. um, but Ethan Hawke, I thought was a great villain. Um, very much in contrast with like Miss Marvel. We talked about the villains in Miss Marvel not being yeah. up to snuff. Um, I loved him, and I loved this like, like weird kind of like cult leader, almost a very like religious guy, and. Yeah, he, he was just uh, it, there. I was very intrigued by his character. That that opening sequence of that where he puts the glass in his shoes and he starts to walk. Uh, uh, God, yeah, I was, yeah. I was, I was like, this is gonna be a cool villain. And, and I think part I, of it I, is that it's kind of realistic, you know? Yeah. Like, yes. Go on Netflix, look up any kind of cult show that they do, and it's pretty realistic, yes. which I appreciated. Yeah, yeah. Like I like I was saying earlier, everything. Uh, Everything that feels grounded, everything that's like boots on the ground storytelling, I love that. Where it could be in our universe, you know, that's the kind of stuff I like the most. Uh, but in Oscar Isaac, just switching back and forth to two wildly different characters, one with an accent. Um, yep. How how good is that, dude? I mean, he's like, I hope that we get more of him in the MCU. I don't know if this was meant to be just kind of a one-off and there's no plans for more Moon Knight, but I would love to see them go forward and do some stuff with him because uh, I want to see the Jake Lockley character um, yeah, and I want to see yeah. if they take that somewhere else. Um, but everyone was great. You know, uh, Layla was great. I don't remember the actress's name, but Layla was a great character. Um, I just really enjoyed it. I, how badass is Moon Knight in his suit? Like, yeah. The, both of his suits, right? I love. Well, honestly, uh, so. Oh no, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I I love the aesthetic of the entire the entire series. Um, it wasn't like I said the very top of the list for me because there was mm-hmm. just some story points that didn't like hit home as much as other ones, and I didn't feel like I said it, that it moved 
the 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 overall MCU storyline along really at all. It was kind of its own little pocket story. Um, but for an introduction to a character, it was really really cool. I mean, a lot of what you just said is why for me it's my number three. <laughs> of course, I it love is. kind of the relationships even between the the three altars, right? Between Mark, Grant, and Jake. Um, yes. You know, they, they each have their relationships with each other. What As Grant becomes more aware of Mark, Mark becomes more aware of Grant. And, you know, they're like brothers. You know, there's that scene where they're dead, that they're both bodies and how do they interact with each other? Mm-hmm. And it's interesting, I think, I mean, we've seen Oscar Isaac throughout a lot of the nerd universe, right? He was... Um, apocalypse right and x-men what six seven years ago not the best movie <laughs> uh but no. he did a pretty good job as apocalypse with what they gave him yeah crossover to star wars right he was poe dameron again didn't have the best storyline sometimes uh, a great character was there huh? great character maybe not the great best storyline but character yeah absolutely absolutely uh, he's in uh, Into the Spider-Verse, right? He shows up at the end as Spider-Man 2099, Miguel O'Hara. So he's kind of been doing some of this nerd gigs for a while now. Um, yeah. But I really like seeing him kind of come on his own. It's interesting what you said about the accent too, right? Because the main character, the main Moon Knight is Mark, Mark Spector. Yes. And Mark Spector is British. So he's playing a British guy, playing an American guy through Grant, yes. right? Or am I confusing yeah. no, those? It's the other way around. It's the other way around. Because the British I think, one, Mark is American. Yes. And I think okay. what's cool about it is Mark Spector is the main in the comics. Yeah. But yes. in this show, it made it seem as though, because we started off meeting Stephen Grant, which I thought was a yes. really interesting yes. way to do it, to like introduce yes. us to the altar rather than the main for the first episode and then have the main break back in. Right. Yeah. Well, and I really liked to... Um, Kind of what I mentioned earlier, right? I work as a therapist. And so this interesting debate, right, of dissociative identity or is it trauma and um, mm-hmm. kind of not only the the pain he's had as a kid, the different grief he's had now as an adult and how that kind of shows up. Like, are these different alters, repress, mm-hmm. repressed memories, traumatic events that he's kind of put aside? And I mean, yes. kind of like you, I can't wait to see Jake more. Um, I think there's hints of Jake throughout, honestly. Um, at yes. least two or three different scenes. Obviously, at the end, we meet Jake. Um, mm-hmm. I agree with uh, what you said about Layla's character, Scarlet Scarab, coming in, kind of a reworking of that character that I think, I know at least on Twitter, was going off. People were loving her, love it, having this Egyptian woman like coming in and, mm-hmm. and beating guys up and having superpowers, right? Uh, I love how it kind of turned also in a way, things on its head as far as the gods, right? We meet uh, the god Khonshu. So it makes mm-hmm. me think, are we going to meet Egyptian gods in the future? We've obviously met uh, as guardian gods or Norwegian gods, whatever you want to call them. Uh, we've met the yep. Greek gods in Thor, yes. right? So where are the Egyptian gods now? Um, yeah. And I think it kind of goes there as far as some of the blood, as some as far as some of the fight scenes. Um, yeah. They're, they're not explicit about it. Uh, but it, it goes there. It has and darker so for tones. Me, it has darker tones. And so for me, I'm wondering, is this setting up then to test the waters for what Darren Devil can be? Right. I hope I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. so. And Moon yeah. Knight is critical to the Midnight Suns in the comics. So yeah. I feel like even if it is a bit of a one-off, um, you know, it takes place primarily in Egypt. We don't really have characters there aside from now. Layla and Mark. I think it welcomes yeah. us to start looking at the MCU outside of the U.S., right? Because for the most part, all of the MCU has been New York, San Francisco, D.C., right? And mm-hmm. space, of course. But at least all yep. the grounded stuff has been United States-centric and Wakanda. So let's yep. go elsewhere, right? Until until kind of this phase, right? This fi- phase yeah. has started. Yeah. Um, we have Shang-Chi, and we got introduced yeah. to different cultures there. Um, but and even different- Shang-Chi is in San Francisco, up until yeah. he goes to the mystical realm. Yeah, for right. sure. I think San Francisco, yeah. I think so. I know they're in California. I think it is San Francisco. Somewhere in California. <laughs> Far yeah. away from us. Well, interesting. So I, I love how our lists, well, I, I think you're going to see, they're wildly different when we get to the end here. Uh, sure, but I, I, <laughs> I'm trying to remember which ones you haven't said yet. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I love, though, that so far, 
for the most part, it's been like, my number five is this. And then the very next thing you talk about is your number four. And it's the exact same thing. So we get to have the full conversation about that series without having to break it up. You know, yeah. it's actually working out perfectly. So, which I didn't <laughs> expect, but I really, really appreciate for just for the sake of the podcast. It, it works out so good. Um, of course, of course. All right. So we are to my number three. You're correct? number three. Let's go. Yeah. My, yes. My number three is the other Marvel special presentation, Werewolf by Night. I love a real good one. Yes. I hope that they do more of these. You mentioned Midnight Suns. Maybe they make that. Maybe they do that. Maybe they like introduce another character next Halloween. And then the following Halloween, they bring them together and we get like a a dark storyline with like Ghost Rider, Werewolf by Night, Moon Knight, like bring them all together. Do something crazy. Um, Also, you know, Moon Knight and Werewolf by Night, like that's he was introduced in Werewolf by Night. And so. Mm -hmm. That's a perfect uh, pair to bring together in something, whether it's a film or, uh, you know, one of those special presentations or a series, a whole series. I would love to see those characters interact, you know, Um, and I I just love everything about this. This this werewolf by night. Uh, I love that they went really old school and they gave us like really practical effects. It looked like those really old classic universal films like with like uh they give us like like a man wolf rather than like what we're used to as like a werewolf right they gave us right something uh, straight out of like werewolf by or werewolf in london right 1930s 1940s yeah it looked like all practical effects even man thing was like it was like a costume it was like a puppet um i love that they use so much practical effects and you know part of that I would, I would say it, it helps that it works with the theme so well because it also probably worked with the budget so well. And I love that in this series specifically, it works really well. Like you don't have to depend on CGI. And, you know, we know that the CGI has been kind of shoddy in some of the series especially. And I think that this series was like made for, um, or this show was made for um, television rather than yeah. the big screen. Because they can they can do practical effects, they can spend less money and still make mm-hmm. it really cool a homage to like old horror. Um, but I love the the introduction of the Bloodstone family. I loved um, when we met the father and he it, yeah well, Ulysses of, yeah we met the carcass of the father. I thought that was like <laughs> right off the bat when they did that scene. I was like, okay, this is like genuinely kind of creepy. I like this a lot. He's coming out like a puppet on strings, and. I was like, they're setting the tone right here from the beginning. But I loved everything. I loved that it was all shot in black and white. Um, yeah. It was just so good. Let me guess. Your number two is Werewolf by Night. You're absolutely right. And again, for a lot of the same reasons, right? I loved in this, what, 40, 50 minute special, we, again, a different corner of the MCU. Who knows where it's going to go? But it's this little one shot almost. It's almost the, the revivals of one shots, right? Yep. I love the the relationship between Ulysses and Elsa that we don't really get to see, but we just kind of know by by Elsa and what I think is her stepmom. Mm-hmm. Um, Elsa Bloodstone as a character in the comics is really dope. Uh, she has the Bloodstone now, so I'm like, she can control monsters, right? She has her own power. She's pretty badass of a fighter, right? And we love having women fighters. We love having women heroes in the MCU. So let's see where it's going to go. Um, similar to what you said, Man Thing being a puppet, I think added so much to it. And in a way, it was kind of fun. Uh, like, I would have loved to have been on that set and been interacting with a puppet Man Thing, you know? Yes. And it also means if they've made it once, it's there ready, waiting in the back, right? Yep. Yep. I loved too just the, it went there again, similar to Moon Knight with some of the blood. And because it was black and white, I think it could, could go even further, right? I think right off the bat, one of the first fight scenes uh, is Elsa and one of the other mercenaries. And I think she either slices his hand off or his head off or something. And it's just blood splatter everywhere. Yes. But we don't know it's blood. We assume it's blood, right? But it's just right. some dark liquid. Yes. So family friendly, right? That's family friendly. Mm-hmm. Um so I love that piece of it. I love this weird 
introduction to Elsa's relationship with with Jack Russell, who has probably one of the best punnest names I've ever heard. Um, yeah. I love that Jack and uh, Ted Man Thing are friends. I want to know more about that, right? Yes. Why are they friends? How do they? I think Man Thing says, "Oh, like I've seen him a bunch of times," or maybe Ted, or maybe uh, uh, what is his name? Jack. There we go. Maybe he says it. Maybe Jack says it, right? Oh, he saved me a bunch of times. We help each other out. Because uh, it just ends so nonchalantly. Like, oh, yeah, we're just, we're going to get coffee. We're good. Yeah. Um, I love, love too the that homage. They... Uh-huh. Go ahead. Because I think you're going to say what I was going to say. I was going to say, I love the homage to um, Wizard of Oz, right? Starting black and white. And then yep. at the end, it comes into color. And, oh, no, we're in present day. Yep, um, yep. Love the homages again to 1930s Monsters Universe films, uh, Dracula, Frankenstein, all those classics. Yes. Uh, also, Michael Giacchino's first film. Uh, yes. First major, uh, I'm going to classify it as a film, right? First major directorial debut. Film. Yeah. Yeah. We know him for his legendary composing, and I think he did a pretty good job. Yeah. You, what do you, you get? You, you got to think there's a, probably a lot of crossover between um composing and directing right yeah like i mean it's it's basically the same thing so you have like a band director you have a film director um and you're kind of uh coaxing this story along and making it flow in the way that you want it to and i think that it's i mean clearly there's some crossover because this was fantastic as as a as a debut it's like this guy's a music composer wait a minute like Okay, yeah. let's try. I mean, come on, man. Give da- give Danny Elfman a movie. Let's see what right. he can do. You know? I and I see- think it showed. I think it shows too that even in a one-off forty to fifty minute special, you can world build. You can have yeah. a good storyline, and you can leave people wanting more. And I yeah. feel like a lot of that was kind of the f- feedback and critique people were getting, or Marvel was getting about She Hulk, Miss Marvel. Like, oh, you had all these episodes and. Maybe you didn't do as much with them, right? Yeah. But here's an example of where that quality really went there. And I'm really hopeful moving forward that that quality is going to stay. You know, as yes. much as I love Marvel content, I don't need it all the time. So can we prioritize quality over quantity? And I, yeah. Kevin Kevin has to know, right? And so I think all the positive feedback, not only to Werewolf by Night, but also to the Guardian special, I think he's hearing it and saying, all right, let's do this more. Have you seen this news that just came out um, within the last couple of days about specifically that about the MCU? No. Yes. Um, so they said there, and I don't know how true this is, but it's in a lot mm-hmm. of places. It's in CBR. It's in a whole bunch of different places online um, that, and I don't know who said it. I don't know if it's Feige that's saying it, um, but someone is saying that they are planning a sort of rework on phase five and the release of stuff. And that they're going to focus okay. more on quality than quantity. Like literally, that's okay. what they said. So I'm interested to see what that means and how they view what they've done so far. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they're saying it was internal critique that that told them this was necessary. So I think they know though. I think uh, the last yeah. episode of She Hulk, like yes, they know. They know. Yeah, Kevin knows the entire. The entire series, right? The entire She-Hulk yeah. series was showing how much they have the finger on the pulse of the fandom, right? Even yep. the toxic fandom. They know yeah. all about it. They know all the tweets. They know all the all all the complaints. Um, you know, they know what people are fans of and what they aren't. And so definitely they're able to do something about it if they choose to. So I the only thing I worry about is like there is some stuff I'm looking forward to. I hope it doesn't get canned. Like I hope they don't go, we don't need that. It's not as good. Um We'll see that. We'll we'll save that for the end. We'll save that for the end, right? We got to get to your number two because I'm so curious now as to what it could be. Yeah. Yeah. So my number two, and this is where I'm going to lose a lot of people because it's not my number Uh one. Okay. Okay. Black Panther Wakanda Forever is my number two. All right. All right. Tell tell me why. This doesn't now. This doesn't take anything away from the film. I thought it was beautiful. I loved Mm -hmm. the just the respect and the homage and the and the the goodbye that we got for not only T'Challa but mm-hmm. Chadwick both at the exact same yeah. time that was yeah. a really 
difficult and fine line to walk to be able to like share a message that applied to real life and this you know fictional world and they did it so well like i would not have yes. wanted that job going in of like hey we want you to um make a second movie without the guy everybody loves because yeah. he passed away and yeah. then we also so you're you're not only gonna have to say goodbye to the character you're gonna have to let people know um how much you miss the actor as well yeah. because they do and Man, I would not want that job like that. Well, I would. And wouldn't. keep in mind, this was all filmed right after he passed. Yes. Right. Yes. Which, which I think probably honestly made the acting performances better because Absolutely. this movie, along with a lot of phase four of the MCU, this movie especially is about grief and loss. Mm hmm. But it hits home more than any of the other grief and loss films because it connects with real life with with the loss of Chadwick Boseman, who, by all accounts, was just an amazing human being. And and I think the fact that he never once really told anyone, didn't complain, didn't yeah. stop working, basically up until the day that he passed. It's so incredible. And you see a lot of parallels between him and the character of T'Challa, right? It's like he yeah. is that character. And I thought the movie did such a beautiful job at at saying goodbye to both. I agree. My only critique is that I wish that was almost all they focused on. I really liked. Really? Um, yes. Tell me about I, that. Well, I, I, in, I liked the introduction. Mm -hmm. of, uh, Taloka, Talokan, the Talokan yeah. people. Mm -hmm. And I, I loved that we met Namor. I love that storyline. I love the Wakanda to Logan storyline. I don't think they needed anything else outside of that. I don't think they needed, mm. people aren't going to like this. I don't think they needed to introduce Riri Williams in this film. I think she had her own series coming up soon. And maybe that's one of the things that they rework. Who knows? Now that they've already introduced her in this, maybe they put her in some other things. But I, f I feel like if she's getting a whole series to introduce her character, we didn't need to introduce her in this film. And I think it takes away a little bit away from the story that we're dealing with Shuri, um, mm. you know, processing her grief, the loss of her brother, the loss of the protector of Wakanda um, and the queen as well. Like she's lost her son. Um, she wants her country protected but they don't know what to do. They don't have the herb. They don't know what to do. Like that was such a good story in its own that I mm -hmm. didn't need to bring in Riri. And I really, really did not need uh, uh, Val and Agent Ross and their whole like, hey, we used to be married. And we. why did we need that in this? Like, I, I, I don't understand why... It wasn't necessary to tell the story they told. I think it took away from the main storyline. I just wanted to stay in Wakanda and and deal with this war that was happening between the Wakandans and the Talokans. I, di I didn't need any more than that. And so that was my really my only critique and the only reason it's not my number one. Um, and, and the fact that I really don't hold this against it. I think maybe introducing Namor does move the MCU along a bit, but I don't know if he's detrimental to the story of Kang. So mm. it, I don't know. It, it didn't, I don't hold that against it. Honestly, I, I just wish they would have stayed with say goodbye to Chadwick, say goodbye to the black Panther. Um, and, and focus on this story of loss and grief. That was enough. I don't agree with you on a few of those parts. Um, okay. Okay. And and for me, Black Panther Wakanda Forever is my number one pick, you know, for at least for the year. Yes. You know, I think you kind of had to have Valentina and Everett Ross, right? Ross is the audience surrogate, right? Martin Freeman, love him to death. He's an audience surrogate. If we don't know what's going on, he doesn't know what's going on, but he's going to find out and they're going to tell him and explain it to him so we as the audience can understand it a bit better, right? I think it was okay. interesting to, that they made him 
uh, ex-husbands to Val. Uh, Val is clearly going to be in the Thunderbolts. Does that yes. mean Ross is going to be in it? Uh, we see throughout the movie that different nations across the country, or not across the country, across the world, are interested in Wakanda now, right? Partly, yes. Partially influenced by Val, it sounds like. You got France, who was tr- wants the, uh, what is it called? The vibranium. Uh, vibranium. Mm-hmm. You got the U.S. that wants the vibranium, right? Literally, Val says it at the end. And so I think that's setting something up for the future, right? Are these countries or the Thunderbolts going to try to flip on Wakanda and try to take its resources, right? Could, could um, be. Which is interesting when you consider the story of what happened with to Logan, right? Um, and this is what I think another one of those levels that I love. It tackles not only the grief of, of course, losing T'Challa the character and Chadwick Boseman the actor. You have the grief of losing the Queen Mother, right? Um, and Angela Bassett, give her an Oscar. Like she, she was the breakout role of that. Like she was the breakout standout role. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. That scene between her. Um, and the Dora Milaje captain, um, whose name I'm forgetting really quick. Um, what is her name? What is her name? Uh, Okoye. <laughs> no, no, Okoye. No, yeah. no, not Okoye. Okoye. When she's just like, you have failed me. Like, you're done. Absolutely heartbreaking. But yeah. such a good acting job. Yeah. Um, so something's, we have that grief, right? We also have Talokan and Namor kind of battling this grief in their own way this own trauma of what could have been right mm-hmm. we see those scenes of namor as a little kid coming back to the surface world to what were his people essentially and they've been run over by the conquistadores right they've been run over from by the col- the colonials and colonization yep. and so th- their own grief right and, and i think in, in a way there's also some jealousy from him and seeing like yes. we're just like wakanda except they're <laughs> up there and we're down here right we also have this beautiful uh, access to vibranium and city and country and our people and i i love those scenes i think right it's right when shuri is debating do i kill him or do i not that you see the parallels right the wakandan kids playing on the street the talokan kids playing in the water just being normal right and so Mm -hmm. that parallel i think is so powerful um and i think it's one of the things that's honestly been talked about the most is this is what could have been uh, hopefully above water right if colonization didn't happen if all these other ills of the world didn't happen uh, and, and that's kind of the the main theme of right black panther one what could have um africa and uh, african americans and and black folks in the world been if it wasn't for in uh, slavery and all these other ills right yes uh, so and, I think, and also wakanda keeping their power to themselves and not sharing it right Exactly, exactly. Um, I also love the parallel of Shuri and Riri. So I thought Riri was a good character to have. Um, again, slightly connected to, to Val, right? She wanted, Val wanted vibranium. Riri somehow fa- made the, the research or the machine or whatever. So they kind of need, they needed someone smart. They did. And I think yeah. honestly, because Riri, when they announced the show, had gotten so much hate, similar to how her comic has gotten hate from loyalists to Tony Stark saying, oh, they're just trying to replace her wokeism, woo woo woo. Yeah. She comes from a very different life. And I really hope when that show comes out, people remember how Riri was in comparison to Shuri, right? You got Riri coming from low income Chicago, happens to be at MIT, super smart, is able to mm-hmm. make her own. T- model one iron man suit with scraps right there's yes. that scene when she shows up at wakanda and she's able to make her own suit the the really dope one and mm-hmm. she's like oh like this is what would have been if i had access to this these types of technology yeah. right whereas then you have shuri who is struggling to remake the heart-shaped herb and in a way is kind of like has, has never lived the low-income life she's always had what she's needed right but now she's struggling with the herb and so she's like what am i missing what am i missing I'm curious though, uh, what did you think about, and and I love this part, and that's why I ask, Shuri, when she goes to the the ancestral plane, she sees, and Jadaka, she sees Michael B. Jordan's Eric. What'd you think of that? Loved it. Um, I well, first I love Michael B. Jordan, so <laughs> absolutely, I'm really happy to see him again. Um, 
and I love that character too. I love Killmonger. Yeah. Um, such a great villain for the first film. Um, I think, honestly, that really confused me. I thought that scene was mm. put in there to show us that maybe Shuri had too much anger, too much bitterness to take on the Black Panther role and that maybe it should yeah. go to someone else. Because I thought the whole movie was kind of setting up until the end sequence, right? The end scene kind of changed my mind on it. But throughout the film, I thought it was setting up Nakia to be the one to take up the mantle because she was so virtuous throughout. And when um, Shuri was kidnapped, she dropped everything to go rescue her. Like she was this uh, just really great people that her country could count on whether she was there or not. And I thought they were somewhere going to bring her back into the fold and like she was going to come back and and take up the mantle because she I don't know I just felt like she had the temperament to do it whereas uh maybe Shuri did not at least at this point and so I thought they yeah. were going to use her in that way and that's like when they brought in uh Killmonger for that scene I'm like oh this is where they say for sure yep she's not ready for this she's not ready yet yeah. she's, she's she's too broken up and that's part of what grief is, though, right? Anger. Mm -hmm. the, the five steps of grief, right? Anger is one of those big ones. And we definitely got to see this more carnal, angry side of Shuri uh, and of a Black Panther that, I mean, left Namor pretty beaten up, pretty scarred. But she also used her smarts on it, in it, right? Oh, I got to get him to a dry land. I got to get him to a desert. And I think it, it is this interesting, again, this portrayal of grief that I think so many of the shows and media this year has kind of tackled right yes um even thinking back to wandavision last year and, and of course dr strange too wanda's grief over vision over her kids um yeah Moon did her kind of she, grief she lost uh, everything literally lost everything but we see in our characters who lose everything they always come back on top yeah. somehow yeah those are the best characters so, right yeah. that's the best character arc, i think that you can have in any any medium is someone and who we is all lost. relate to it we all relate to it yes yeah maybe not it, as it, extreme but right um and, but but that's the thing too is like grief is so um it's it's so individual it's so um subjective right like what you go through can hurt just as much as something that someone else yeah. goes through, even though objectively it doesn't look like the same thing. It can feel like the same thing. So I love how when I'm trying I remember to... that line from uh, WandaVision that Vision says, what is grief if not love everlasting or something yes. like that? You Great know? line. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Whoever wrote that kudos. Yes, that was, that was um, great. But I think or love preserving, excuse me, uh, I mean, yes. look at Shuri, right? Her grief. What is grief if not love? Not only for T'Challa, obviously for... Um, why am I blanking on his name? <laughs> T'Challa's Chadwick Boseman. Oh, my God. Um, yes. Right? Like, similar for Namor. What is grief if not love for all his people, the people he lost? Mm -hmm. The people he lost fighting the Wakandans, you know? So that's why it's my number one. I think it's hits and there on so many levels. There's definitely moments where like, yeah, this is getting a little long. Um, but I think at the end of the day, the storyline, the acting, this is one of the interesting ones because now I want to know where is this going to go forward with? Yes. And, and that's, in a way, you, you know, could say it's pretty siloed in Wakanda. Yeah. And, and, but I think with like, okay, so this one for me is an exception where it didn't bother me as much that it wasn't as connected uh, because they had a big job to do mm -hmm. in saying goodbye and introducing a new character, you yeah, know, and that's, yeah. that's why it doesn't bother me as much. It's like the movie's called Wakanda forever. I get it. Let's, let's hyper focus on this country and what they're going through and like their journey. Yeah. That's so I, it didn't bother me as much. That's why it's my number two. Um, and God, man, you're making a convincing argument. If I didn't already have this list, you may I can't remember what what have you not mentioned yet? Oh, is there something man. I missed? What is your number one? The reason that you're forgetting is because you listed it as your number eight. Uh, my oh, number, yeah. my number, number one, one? 
Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Men. Are you and, getting paid to say this? Kevin, are you here? Kevin Feige? I'm a, I'm a shill. I'm an MCU shill. No, um, so I just think that it did the most to continue the, the, the Kang story. The last bit of Kang story, like the multiverse story, right? This is yeah. the multiverse yeah. saga. These three uh, phases are the multiverse saga. Yeah. And the only other thing we've really gotten that delved into the multiverse was Loki. Like that's, I feel like that was the Spidey, only one. Spidey, No Way Home. Ye- okay, yes. But I couldn't rank that here. So, um, yes, yes, but yes, you, know, it's, you, know, you know, what's funny is actually you just reminded me of this. So when I did my 2021 uh countdown yeah Spidey was number one so hands down yeah and so in that same vein that is why dr strange in the multiverse of madison might number one uh because i love that it's pushing this story forward and it it intrigues me so much like mm-hmm. they introduce america chavez she has this yeah. ability that she can now control to yes. open up portals to the other universes in the multiverse and uh-huh. it excites me more than any of these other things that I watched. It got me more hyped for what to expect next. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Oki did that last year with the introduction of of Jonathan Majors as Kang. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. man, this is a great character. And we're going to see, see different versions of the character. And I can't wait for that. Um, this just moved us a little bit closer to that, right? We know we, we've got coming up. Quantumania is going to really introduce a different version of Kang. Um, And who knows, you know, it it seems like the first, like, I don't know. So we got um, Spider-Man No Way Home ended a phase and then, or or not ended a phase, but ended last year. This year started with Multiverse of Madness. That was dealing with the multiverse. And then- Is that really what started this year? It feels like forever ago. Moon Knight started this year, but it was the first film of the year. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it and and so that's I mean that's the main reason it's my number one. Like I said, you have a convincing argument <laughs> that you made me see some things for Wakanda Forever that I wasn't taking into account for sure. Um, but the reason I had chosen it as my number one is because of how much it moves the story forward and how much it excites me. Yeah, for Phase Five because phase I will five, say I, I loved I loved the after credit scene. Clea incursions are happening. Let's see where this yeah. is going to go. Exactly. And and that's whenever a film and this is something they used to do all the time is the post credit scene would really hype you for what's coming next. Yeah. Um lately they've got they've gone a little either sometimes it's just silly or sometimes it's not really related, but it's just like we'll tack something on for fans, you know, fan service yeah. stuff. Um but it used to be all about like hyping up the next thing or the the next phase to come, like, you know seeing thanos in avengers like yeah these post scenes are what get you hyped for what's coming next and um the, i feel like the multiverse of man i mean it's in the name it's multiverse of madness like nothing else was called mul- multiverse anything and i think that it was it was our no way home did it a bit but it it didn't take us into another universe which was really mm-hmm. cool i loved I think some people didn't like what they did with the what is it Earth eight nine four is that what it's called three nine eight four nine what whatever it was called right um, but where we met the Illuminati right and we got the Professor X oh yeah 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 we got um, we got Reed Richards and they all just got massacred Black by one old, yeah see but they that got, that scene made sense to me yeah me Reed too. Richards is got his head up his own ass like yeah that is the biggest character trait about him like mortis man alive, really right? black bolt yeah literally yeah. like mm-hmm. they underestimated wanda based on what the wanda of their universe did and was able to do so they got right. massacred that made sense to me yeah well i love the scene too i love that Kind of like the end of She-Hulk. I love when they mess with fans like that. Like they set something up and you're really excited and they're just like, just kidding. Like they set this up. They killed everyone. They killed them all. And in vicious fashion. Like, yes, it was ruthless. Like blowing up Black Bolt with his own voice, like exploding his brain, I guess. I don't know. Um, And then you've got. But yes. Yeah. The whole thing, right? Like uh, 
turning uh, Reed Richards into spaghetti. Like, it, oh man, it was so good. And it showed how powerful she really was too. Like taking out yeah. Professor X like that. You're going to take out Professor X, uh, like one of the strongest mental powered mutants on the planet, arguably the, the strongest, taken out like that by Wanda and her rage. Like, it was so vicious and so awesome. Anyway, so for that scene and just the uh, the, the real introduction, I feel like, to the multiverse. Mm-hmm. That's why it's... All right. I'll hand it to you. I'll hand it to you. All right. So now what what kind of stuff are you most looking forward to coming up? Like not the trailers like we talked about earlier, but like in phase five, we've got like Thunderbolts. We've got these series. We've got a Echo. bunch, right? I mean, even thinking next year, right? We've got Quantumania, of course, in February. We yep. got Guardians in May. Uh, the Marvels, which we don't have a trailer for yet in July, right? And that's supposed to, we're seeing Kamala Khan. Uh, Carol Danvers, um, Tiana Paris's character, whose name is Monica, Monica Rambo, right? Three mm-hmm. characters that are kind of tied together, at least in the co- in the comics, they're very tied together. But yeah. at least in our MCU, you're kind of tied together. So I want to see yeah. how that's gonna go, right? Um, we've got Secret see, Invasion. Oh God, I want to see I want to see Kamala Khan on the big screen. Yeah, like. That's, I'm excited for that. That's that's my biggest reason for like being excited for the Marvels because until we met her, I wasn't all that excited for the Marvels. Uh, mm-hmm. But now that I know like she's a big part of it, I'm excited to see what she does on it. And I'm just I'm so thrilled. Like, not only was I know we talked about it earlier, like her fandom is yeah. what connects the character, but outside of that, the actress's fandom connects me to the actress. Absolutely. And, like, and so it, it thrills me that a kid who loves this stuff got to grow up and be in it. Like that is the story ever. Imagine that. And it's her first acting role, isn't it? It's like her first acting role. Imagine them calling you up. Alejandro, hey, we know you love the MCU. Um, Are you interested in playing a character, a major character? Right, (laughs) like. (laughs) Oh man, that's awesome. That'd be amazing. And it's interesting, right? We also talked a little bit about Phase four kind of was embracing diversity a bit more, right? As far at least ethnic and racial diversity. And the Marvels, I mean, for what it's worth, the three main actors you got, uh, I don't know if Iman Vellani is uh, Pakistani, but at least the character is, right? Tiana mm-hmm. Paris is a black woman playing Monica Rambo. And then you got Carol Danvers and white women, like these three women from very different backgrounds, both. Yep actor wise and also in in universe wise right like i think that says a lot from what kevin and marvel want to do yeah absolutely and and they've done it for sure with this phase like wakanda forever i i think one of my favorite things about wakanda in general is the very believable dora milaje like absolutely i'm sorry like i understand people get upset sometimes when they try to like force a tough female role um, they don't have to force that at all. You don't have to convince nope. me that they are tough. It's believable. Um, you automatically respect them. Yeah. And when you, if you heard about it without actually seeing it, it might be hard to really like capture yeah. what they're trying to say. Like, oh, these women are the protectors of the royal family yeah. and like the main protectors of Wakanda. They are the most fierce warriors in the land. And you're like, come on, really? And then you see them and you're like, Okay, they they and are. What I love about them too is we've seen them since Civil War, right? Uh, mm-hmm. We had Io played by Florence Kinsumba, that famous on like "Move or You Shall Be Moved," yes. like that's all she had to say, and people were like, "Oh, all right, all right," you know. And then yeah. she showed up again in Falcon and Winter Soldier, like they're there, and you don't mess with them. Yeah, I love it. Everyone like doesn't matter who you are, you're a little nervous when you know they're around. Yeah. Like yeah. Sebastian Stan, I, I think he was the one that found the was he the one that found the the, yeah. the, the thing um, in that series. And he's like, oh, no, like he knew right away, like, oh, man, I can't believe we got them involved here. Like. I, or, love I love that scene where he's trying to fight them and they're like, nope, we'll take your arm off. Like we're not playing, bro. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love it. I love it. They, it, it. Like I said, just so believable as badasses. Yeah. And. It doesn't feel forced at all. No. And again, it continues next year, right? We got 
I mean, Secret Invasion being led by Samuel L. Jackson, right? We got yeah. Echo being led by a Native American uh, character, Native American actress. Like, when have we seen a Native American superhero in mainstream, right? Also, um, she's deaf. Yeah. Like, there's a lot yeah. going on here. Like, and, yeah. and uh, I think, so, what else? Is she... I can't remember. Is that is she actually missing her leg? I can't remember if that's real or if it's part of the story of Echo. So remember, she had I um, think a she's just deaf. I don't. Oh no, no, yeah, she has a prosthetic leg. The the actress Alakwa Cox is yes is deaf, is Native yes. American, and also is an amputee. Like she has a prosthetic leg. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's that is awesome. That is all. Aw- and she was a yeah. really interesting character. Like Hawkeye was probably my favorite series last year. Um, <laughs> I absolutely loved it. It was good holiday fun, you know, much like the Christmas, uh, the holiday special. Um, it was just yeah. it was so much fun on top of like awesome action. Um, great mm-hmm. chemistry uh, between the two Hawkeyes. Um, I, yeah. I just loved it. I loved um, the. Uh, the what are they called? The bros. Uh, the tracksuit mafia. Tracksuit mafia, so ridiculously yes. slapped funny. Um, but I love that series so much. I, I absolutely adored it. I think it was my number one, at least of the series last year. And um, yeah, then I of guess we're we done. Got... The list. What? Go ahead. Well, no, for next year too, right? We're supposed to get Loki. Yeah, we're Loki supposed season. To get Ironheart again, mm-hmm. Riri Williams, and then I think I would assume. If they're going to give us Agatha next year, it's going to be Halloween time. I hope so. Yeah. Maybe, you know, because honestly, honestly, I love her, but I don't know if I want a whole series of the character. I'd be okay, though, if they want to do the special presentation treatment, right? Give her the Halloween special next year. I think it depends. I think it depends because it could be one of those shows that sets up future stuff. We know witchcraft is a thing, magic, right? Like, mm-hmm. is it going to, there's rumors it's going to bring in Billy. Yes. You know? Right. You, yeah. That's I, a pretty I, big remember, move. Yeah. I remember hearing that, bringing in the uh, the aged up children, which I think yeah. would be interesting. And, and it sounds, you know, obviously like they're setting up a Young Avengers or something going forward. So Absolutely. In this phase, I feel like, um, and a lot of these series have done that well, is like usher in the younger characters using the older characters ushering yep. in younger characters and so i feel like i do think that's where they're, where they're going at least with avengers is bringing in a younger version and then at the same time they're going to be bringing in x-men to i think x-men and fantastic four will kind of take the lead of the mm-hmm. next pieces right? the seven eight nine if they plan to do it mm-hmm. that way i think it'll be mostly fo- like that's the team we're gonna we're gonna be looking forward to x-men and then x-men Age of Apocalypse or whatever, you know, series that they or, or film that they want to um, right. make as like the big. Uh, the big. Main piece of that they're building up to, I think it's going to be X-Men and Fantastic Four and the Avengers will kind of take more of a back seat, at least for that phase. That's what I think. Yeah, well, and I think it's going to. It's going to introduce, not like like you said, not only mutants. We got Fantastic Four coming up in the future. We got Blade in the future. Oh, man. They're really world building and, and making this universe on such a big scale that it's not just Steve, Tony, Hulk, Thor. Yeah. Right? That every corner of the universe kind of has its own story. And personally, I wouldn't be upset if some of the movies or some of the shows in Phase 4, 5, 6 don't really connect until seven, eight, nine. Totally agree. You know, I don't think they all have to connect with multiverse. I'm sure a lot of them are going to end up connecting for secret wars, but I don't, yes. personally, I don't think they have to. No. And I think honestly, I'd be okay with um it, it just being kind of a cameo uh, yeah. team up. Like they, they show up, you're like, who are these people? They're from a different earth, whatever. And then, you know, they help to defeat Kang or what have you. And then, or, or whatever, the villain will be in that film. And then in the next phase, then you go, you want to know more about these characters? Uh, Weapon X series, you know, um, yeah. you know, whatever. Professor X meets uh, 
uh, Magneto, right? You get that story, yeah. like that yeah. backstory, yeah. and you do it through series, just like they're doing now. And I think that would be great. Like have them come in just for a cameo as their full fledged self, and then kind of go back for the next phase and tell the individual stories. Oh, I would love that. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't need it. You're right. Just like the comic books, they only connected every once in a while for like a big crossover story. Most mm -hmm. of the time you had an X-Men universe and an yeah. Avengers universe, right? They had their own stories going on. And then every once in a while, they'd have a big crossover. So right. I'd be okay with that too. Give me some X-Men movies that don't even feature the event. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So they're making this universe even bigger. And we thought it was huge, you know, five years ago. Like, this is crazy. Look at this end game. Everyone's in it. No, like a tenth of the people are in it, you know? So get and, ready. In Faggy, we trust. In Faggy, we trust. Yes, yes. In the AI, we trust. For <laughs> uh, my friend, thank you so much for, for jumping in and saving thank you. this podcast, man. This has been the coolest. Like, I did not expect for one to even be in this situation, but also for it to go this well. When I proposed, like, hey, does anyone from the audience here want to just be my guest for the episode? Um, I didn't expect anyone to volunteer, honestly. And yeah, but when you yeah. did, I was like, you know, I don't know you from Adam. We don't know each other. Like, how well nope. is this gonna go? Is it gonna flow? Is there gonna be chemistry? It worked out really well. I could not be happier with this podcast. Thank so you. thank you so much, man. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. Like I remember uh, you know, when you asked earlier, not a lot of people were kind of volunteering. I was like, you know what? I'll do it. I'm here. I'm in Columbus. Why not? Let's have fun. We're at a con. Yes, absolutely. It, it, it was, dude, it turned out better than I could have imagined. Maybe better than it was going to, to begin with. I think <laughs> collaboration was meant to be. So absolutely. I'm, I'm glad that it happened. Um, and then hope, I mean, hopefully I'll see you again next year. If you go to galaxy con or anything yeah, do you else ever come up to, um, they renamed it, uh, wizard world, uh, Cleveland. No, I but I might now. I um, might. What is it called? Uh, it's called Fan Expo now. It's Fan Expo. Oh, really? Like this? Yep. I mean, this is Galaxy Con Fan Expo, so it's like, yeah, that's cool. That's I think cool. they took over, uh, but yeah, I think it's in. It's going to be in March. I'm going to start putting out uh, feelers in, and see if I can do a live show up there. Maybe that would be cool. I don't know if there's any fan done stuff up there, but if it's a Fan Expo, maybe. Yeah, I, right? What I've done in the past is I kind of just interviewed people on the floor and then made it an episode. That's cool. I had cosplayers, even thought yeah. That's yeah. awesome. That would be cool. Well, again, thank you so much, man. You really saved the day here and uh, made a wonderful show. So, thank you. Thank and you. Um, hopefully, we can collaborate again in the future. I would love to have you back on uh, the regular show to like break down an episode of maybe Secret Invasion or something else that's coming up. For sure. Let me know. Just hit me up. Awesome, man. Thank you again. We'll talk to you later. Sounds good. Bye. Thank you.